As we mentioned in the last video, the concept of simple interest is the basis for a lot of things, but it's not really used very often. One of the things that simple interest is the basis for is this idea of compound interest, which is used all of the time. The idea of compound interest is basically this. Let's start with kind of the simple interest situation. We had $200. We're earning 4% interest every year. So if we start with $200, after one year, we'd have earned $200 times 4% times that year, and we'd have earned an additional $8. Now, at the end of this year, suppose you get this interest payment and we put it in with our $200. Then when we go to the next year, the second year, I still am using an account that's earning 4% interest, but now I have, oops, now I have $208 in my account. I have the initial $200 plus the $8 in interest. Well, if I want to figure out what 4% of $208 is after a year, I'll do 208 times 0 0.04 times 1, and I get $8.32. If this had been simple interest, I just would earn that same $8 every year. But because I was able to kind of get that interest out and reinvest it, the next time here, I'm able to get a little bit more money, right? I got $8. I got an extra 32 cents that I hadn't gotten the year before. If I take that $208 and now I can add in my $8.32. Now for this next calculation, I have $216.32 in the bank. So if I go on to the next year, for example, now same idea would hold. This time, I'm going to take the $216.32, my initial $200 and all the interest and reinvestment that I've earned. I'm going to pay 4% of that over a year. And that's going to get me $8.65 for the next year. Which altogether would give me a total of... $224.97 at the end of one, two, three years. If we wanted to compare that to the example in the last one, we'd be able to do one more year. Same idea, only this time I'm taking this higher value, the $224.97. Finding 4% of that gives me an additional $9.00. And I can add that $9 into my $224. Now, in this case, I have $233.97, whereas in the last example, just using simple interest, I only had $232. So this idea of reinvesting really ends up kind of giving you this exponential growth as we're going through. And like any time we're dealing with exponential growth, it's nice to be able to have a single formula that you can just plug things in to work for as far and as long as you want. The compound interest formula is basically just a fancy exponential growth model formula because that's exactly what's happening here. The formula that we like to use is A is equal to P times 1 plus R divided by N to the NT power. This is our compound interest formula. In this case, our variables mostly mean the same thing as we're going through here. Our A is the ending amount in the account. Our P is our principal or starting value. Our R is our annual percentage interest rate in decimal form, of course. 
and our T is our time in years. Now, in this case, notice that we have a divided by n here and a times to by n up here. And the reason for that is because sometimes our compounding is going to occur in different time periods. Here, in my initial example here, I just recalculated the interest every single year. But it would be possible, for example, to calculate the interest every single month and reinvest it. So what the n represents in this formula is it's what we call the number of compounding periods per year. Here are some common values that you might see for n. If you ever see the word it's compounded annually, that means that it's only being compounded one time a year and we use n equals one. Probably the most common one that we see is compounded monthly. And in this case, what we're using is n equals 12. Every single month it's redoing that calculation. So it's 12 um, months in a year, so 12 compounding periods per year. Other things that you'll see sometimes are quarterly. In this case, we're looking at n equals four. Four times a year we're reevaluating. Uh, this is done a lot in like sales and business where you have maybe quarterly bonuses or quarterly quotas that you're working to attain. Um, and another one that you'll often see is weekly, uh, which would be 52 times a year. So these are some of the more common values and kind of what that N represents as we're moving forward. Let's do um, an example here to kind of see what's going to happen. Let's suppose that we're going to start by investing $6,000. We find an account that pays us 5.25% interest, and we're going to leave it alone in that account for eight years. And what we'd like to know is how much money are we going to have in the account at the end of that time. This 6000 is my principal or starting investment value. This 5.25% gives me my rate. And this is my time in years, so that's my T. Oh, I missed any sort of compounding here. Uh, let's say that it's compounded monthly. In this case, we're going to be using n equals 12. So as I go to my compound interest formula, a is equal to p times 1 plus r over n to the nt. I'm going to put these different values in here. Um, so p is going to be 6,000 times 1 plus, my rate is 0 0.0525 divided by 12, because it was compounded monthly. And then up here, I'm going to do 12 times 8. Now, both the 12 and the times 8 both need to be in the exponent. For almost every calculator, including Desmos, you need to, you often need to put that 12 times 8 in parentheses, so it makes sure that all of those values are showing up in the parentheses as we go forward. In fact, it might be nice for you to write that NT in your formula in parentheses, just to remind yourself of that. At this point, then, we can go ahead and use our favorite calculator. And I'm going to go ahead and just pull my Desmos app up here on my phone. Um, and so I'm sitting right here. I'm going to plug these values here in. So it's going to be 6,000 times by, so I'm going to use my parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.0525 divided by 12. Now, at this point, if we put the parentheses here, notice it's going to be at the bottom, and that's not where I want it. I want it to be out here at the side. You can either click to the right here, or you can use the right arrow on that side there in the, in the value. I'm going to close the parentheses, and the next thing I want to do is make sure that everything that comes next is in the exponent. So I click that A to the B button. My cursor is up at the top now. And now I want to do 12 times 8. I'm going to write this without the parentheses so you can see what happens. Notice here the 12 was in the exponent, but the times 8 is not, and that's a problem for us. So let's go back here to make sure everything is in the exponent. We're going to put our whole 12 times 8 
inside of parentheses in the exponent position, and now it all comes out great. We can hit enter, and we end up in this case. I started with $6,000, but by waiting eight years with this compounding um, interest going on, I end up with $9,123.41. So that's the kind of the basic idea that you can have as you move forward. Um, another type of thing that you might be able to do instead of solving for the total amount that you would have at the end, let's say that you had a total amount that you were interested in. So let's say that we wanted or needed $10,000 for a family vacation. in five years. So how much would I need to invest now to get that $10,000 in an account? earning 2.05% interest. Compounded monthly. All right, so here I'm going to make an initial investment, but I don't know what that is. So P is what I'm looking for. In this case, T is my time in years. That's gonna be the five. 10,000 is the amount I want to end up with. So that's going to be the A value in this case. And then our R is, of course, that percent interest rate. Make sure it's in decimal form, so 0 0.0205. And because it's being compounded monthly, the N value in my formula is going to be 12. So if I start with, here's my formula, P, oops, not P, A equals P times one plus R over N to the NT power. My A is going to be $10,000. P I don't know. Times one plus R is 0 0.025 divided by 12 to the, and then in the exponent, I need 12 times five years. And I'll have that in parentheses to make sure that that all works out okay. Now I want to get the P by itself. And there's all of these other numbers there that I'm going to have to get rid of. But if you notice, the P is being multiplied by all of these numbers here. So I can do all of this math right here on the right-hand side and simplify it down to a single number. And that'll give me a much easier equation that I can solve. On the left, I have 10,000. On the right, I have P times. And now I'm going to go in here back to Desmos, and I'm going to do a calculation of all of this. So uh, it's very important to include all of the parentheses exactly the way that you see it. Um, our formulas are only going to get bigger from here on out, and the location of parentheses for order of operations is critical to getting the correct solution. So parentheses 1 plus 0 0.0205 divided by 12. I'm going to move that over and close the parentheses, and then I want to take that to the power, so hit that A over B button, and I want 12 times 5. And in this case, I get this 1.1078 number. Now, if I want to get P by itself, it's being multiplied by this number. So we just need to divide by that. So divide by 1.1078 on each side. That gets the P by itself. Here on Desmos, if I hit enter, so I'm on a new line, I can just do 2,000 divided, or 10,000, excuse me, divided by that last answer, so the ANS button, and I get $9,026.57. So if right now I put $9,026.57 in a bank account, earning... 2.05% interest compounded monthly, I'll have the $10,000 in five years that I need to go on vacation. So I'm kind of getting almost $1,000 worth of quote unquote free money from the interest calculation here. 
Now, the real it, it's not necessarily very realistic to have $9,000 at a single go that you can just set aside for a vacation. It's more likely that maybe you'd be able to set aside $25 from every paycheck or something like that. That's outside of the realm of our compound interest formula, but it's exactly the basis for what the savings plan formula is that we'll look at in the next video.